just that um, was that uh, you know here was a guy who uh, has given a lot of lip service over the years to wanting to become a great worker that was never the truth uh, Jim Elwig uh, used the wrestling business it was a means to an end uh, Jim Helwig, to his uh, credit, tremendously dedicated to keeping his body in shape. That's about it. Uh, Jim was for Jim, for the most part, from what I can tell. I personally never had a problem with him, and I'll tell you why. Because when he first came in the business, he came to the Mid South with Sting. Right. And some of the first few matches he had. He was in the ring with me, and I was leading him around by his nose, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, assuring him that I was, you know, I was there to to make him. I was there to do what was good for business, not what was good for Ted, you know. And uh, I did that. So he never, he trusted me. Uh, but there were so many times that I had heard him say, "Yeah, I really want to learn how to work," but I never saw him really tried to learn how to work. And he never did. I mean, uh, he looked great. They'd play his music. He'd run to the ring. He'd run around the ring. He'd shake the ropes. And the show was over. Right. Because everything that happened from then was just, it was the same. If you'd seen it once, you'd seen it. Uh, what I thought was exceptional, and it was an exceptional effort on Hulk Hogan's part, was the match that they had when Hulk dropped the belt. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I really did. I was very emotional when I watched that because it was, you know, it was a, it was a, a, a major change, a major shift in power, and it was one I didn't agree. I told Vince that too. I, I tell you what, I told Vince. I said, I said, Vince, I said, uh, I said, I think you're creating a monster. I said, because uh, I don't uh, begrudge anybody getting a break. But I got a real problem with a guy getting a break who doesn't appreciate it. A guy who's getting a break who doesn't appreciate what he's been given or the people that are making him who he is. And I said, this guy's a monster. I said... I see how he acts in public. I see how he treats people. I see him make stewardesses, flight attendants cry. I see him tell kids to just, you know, f off. Is he as crazy as everybody says he is? Basically, <laughs> can be. And I don't know if a lot of that was, you know, drugs he was taking, right. steroids. I don't know. I, I, you know uh, and can I verify that he took any of those things? No. I speculate, I speculate on everybody else. You know, well, he sure looks awful good. You know, <laughs> but uh, um, I just didn't see a guy that uh, appreciated what he was what he was giving. And of course, you know, Vince's response to me at the time was, "You know what, Ted? Uh, he's my monster. I can handle him." Which was a very that was <laughs> you know that was that was Vince's ego speaking. Well. I never went up to Vince and said, I told you so. All right. But when he held him up in the garden, I had an opportunity to go up and say, Vince, I told huh. you so. But uh, my understanding, he actually held him up again. Yeah, you know, when he came back. When he came back. Right. That's <laughs> just, you know, yeah. first time, shame on me. You know, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. Uh, of course, at that time, I think that for Vince to bring him back when he did the second time, I think it was more a move of desperation. But, uh, yeah, uh, I had a real problem with, with creating, trying to create something in somebody that had no more skill than it did. And, and again, I don't know, you know, maybe, you know, uh, maybe by that point Vince just thought that he could create anybody, you know. Like, it's not you and your talent, it's just all me. I, I have no idea right, right. why he would do that. You know, unless it was a statement of of, of, uh, of his ego, and, and I don't know. I mean, and I 
think that Vince would even tell you that uh, they're between the first big run and the second big run. You know, there came there came a point where you know you couldn't get to where you couldn't just you know you couldn't. He wasn't listening to people anymore. He was just doing what he thought, you know, like everything I do is going to be you know, perfect. Earlier on, we were talking about the demons of the business, and uh, WrestleMania 6, you faced Jake Roberts. I don't know if you saw Beyond the Mat. Did you get a chance to see it? I haven't seen it yet. I've heard a few stories, and I heard that uh, that Jake was real honest yeah. uh, about his problems and, uh, and uh, where he's at today. What are your memories of Jake? I'm going to tell you something, guys. Uh, I've known Jake for his entire career. I knew Jake um, before he got in the business. Matter of fact, uh, when he first started, I was wrestling down there for Bill, you know, and uh, he started refereeing. And uh, I've known him a long time, and, and he was a friend for a long time. And uh, Jake Roberts is another one of those guys, you know, who has an unbelievable amount of talent. He's a guy who uh, knows this business, grew up in it, old school, and has, uh, oh gosh, just a tremendous, Jake's one of those guys, he's a, he's a creative guy. Jake would have been a great booker, great booker. Uh, Jake knows how to uh, look at a guy and, and get the best out of him. You know, you know, you learn how to study somebody, and, and you study a guy, and you watch these de different guys that you know you're going to work with, and you see what they can do well and what they can't do, and then you incorporate that into your into what you can do. And Jake knew how to do that well. I enjoyed working with Jake just about as much as anybody. And uh, I would say that even though I wrestled three times at WrestleMania four. And I was the main event uh, at WrestleMania Nine. The the my favorite WrestleMania was that one because hmm. I had a heck of a match with that guy, and I loved working with him. I really did. And uh, one of the other reasons I loved working with Jake is it was so easy. You know, the thing people ask me, they say, "Because what's, what's the toughest match you ever had?" <laughs> well, the toughest match any guy in this business ever has is 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 is. When you have to climb in the ring, like I had to do so many times, with somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, and lead them around by the nose, you know, you know, and show them how to do it, you know, the the, the ones you like are the ones where you just go in there and relax and know that no, that that it's just going to flow. And with him, I always did. We always had that chemistry. Cool. Yeah, I, uh, I, it's just sad. It, it's just sad what's happened to Jake. And I have, I tried to contact Jake. Uh, a number of times through different people that I've run into him and said, you know, I had him give me a call and just uh, never, I haven't heard from him in a long time. The Undertaker, uh, you introduced him at Survivor Series. Uh, what did you see in him at the time? Uh, a guy with a lot of raw, raw talent. I mean, uh, Mark Callis was uh, uh, a guy with a look and uh, with some potential. It was, at the time, still pretty raw potential. But he developed well, yeah. I mean, uh, again, uh, to work the way he had to work made it, you know, that's not easy. Right, right. 